Hi, so today we're going to be talking about regulation of fatty acid metabolism. And the three main topics we'll be talking about would be hormonal control, allosteric control, and then gene expression. In hormonal control, we're going to be talking about mainly how insulin and glucagon affect the activity of the enzymes involved in the pathways. In allosteric control, we're going to be talking about the substrates that are going to be binding allosterically to those enzymes, which would be palmitoyl-CoA or fatty acyl-CoA, citrate, and then malonyl-CoA. And then for gene expression, we're going to be talking about how feeding and insulin are going to affect the rate of expression of these enzymes in the pathways. So we're going to start by talking about hormonal control and how glucagon affects fatty acid oxidation slash synthesis. First of all, when, we're, when glucagon is released, we know that we're in a state of low energy. That means that we have to get energy from different sources like glucose, and fatty acids. So we're going to undergo oxidation, right? So oxidation is going to be activated. And the main enzymes that are going to be activated are going to be hormone-sensitive lipase by phosphorylation because we know glucagon activates that pathway that activates pKa, and pKa is going to phosphorylate other enzymes to make them active. So hormone-sensitive lipase is going to be phosphorylated and it's going to be active. That is going to activate the mobilization of fats. So let's write that down. And it's gonna be the mobilization of fats from our adipose tissue. And like we studied from glucose and gluconeogenesis and glycolysis, we know that we're going to activate fructose bisphosphatase too by phosphorylation. And that's also going to give us activation of gluconeogenesis. And that's going to provide glucose for breakdown in energy. So therefore, we know that if we are low in energy, we're not going to be making any fatty acids. So we're not going to be using energy to make fatty acids. Therefore, synthesis is going to be inhibited. And so is acetyl-CoA carboxylase, which is the main, one of the main enzymes in fatty acid synthesis. That's going to be inhibited by phosphorylation. So after eating a high-carb meal or high-fat meal, we're going to release insulin. And that, what that's going to do is we're going to want to store that fat if we don't need it for energy, or that glucose if we don't need it for energy. So synthesis is going to be activated. And we know that insulin is going to dephosphorylate or cause dephosphorylation of certain enzymes, activating it or deactivating them. So in the case of synthesis, dephosphorylation of acetyl-CoA carboxylase by the action of insulin is going to activate it, right? Because now we want to store the fats, make them fats, and store them for energy for later. In the case of oxidation, oxidation is going to be inhibited because of dephosphorylation by insulin. And so is hormone-sensitive lipase. We're going to decrease mobilization of fats. Because we're not using them for energy. We're, we're storing them now. And as we know from glycolysis and gluconeogenesis regulation, we are going to activate phosphofructokinase 2 and the bifunctional enzyme by dephosphorylating it through insulin and that's going to increase the rate of glycolysis. So overall, insulin is going to want to make fats and store them, or for breakdown of glucose, increase gl glycolysis. So now let's talk about allosteric control of fatty acid synthesis and oxidation. What, what do we mean by allosteric control? Well, when we have an enzyme, we know that if a substrate binds onto, onto the allosteric side, that's going to change the conformation of the actual enzyme and either upregulate it or downregulate it so the enzyme acts in a different way. Well, our players are going to be citrate, palmitoyl-CoA, and malonyl-CoA, and they're going to bind to the allosteric side of specific enzymes that we're going to talk about, changing the activity of that enzyme. So let's start by talking about citrate. We know that from the citrate malate shuttle, which shuttles acetyl-CoA in the form of citrate out of the mitochondrion and into the cytosol, 
and then reconverts it back into acetyl-CoA by citrate lyase, we know that a lot of citrate is going to mean that we have a lot of acetyl-CoA. So citrate is going to bind allosterically to acetyl-CoA carboxylase, telling the cell that, and telling acetyl-CoA carboxylase to get ready for synthesis of fatty acids. So after we have turned acetyl-CoA into malonyl-CoA and then into palmitoyl-CoA, and a lot of more acetyl-CoA is, is being brought from the mitochondrion into the cytosol, we're synthesizing our fatty acids, more and more fatty acids, and the increase of fatty acids, of palmitoyl-CoA in this case, is going to bind, let me show you this, it's going to bind to acetyl-CoA carboxylase, again, allosterically, and inhibit it. So now it's going to tell the cell, or it's going to tell acetyl-CoA carboxylase, hey, we have a lot of fats, we don't really need to be making them. And so how does malonyl-CoA play a role? Well, if we are making a lot of fats, the role of malonyl-CoA is going to be to tell the cell we do not want to oxidize fats because we're making them. So what it's going to do, malonyl-CoA is going to come over here to the carnosine acyltransferase 1, get over here, and it's going to also inhibit its activity that's going to prevent fatty acyl coase from being turned into fatty acyl carnitine and being brought to the mitochondrion and oxidized. So malonyl coa is going to tell oxidation to stop. We don't need to be oxidizing fats when we're actually making them. So now let's briefly talk about gene expression as it relates to the regulation of fatty acids. Well, the following enzymes, acetyl-CoA, carboxylase, fatty acid synthase, and adipose lipoprotein lipase are all going to be upregulated by feeding or eating and insulin. And as we've already discussed, insulin hormonally regulates acetyl-CoA carboxylase and fatty acid synthase because it tells the cell that we're going to make fats.